all. Hail to the Christ within. This is your obedient servant, Reverend George Latimer Knight, coming to you with this week's Sunday school lesson. We're in lesson number 43, October 25th, 2020 is the lesson date. International subject is love never fails. UHSC subject, the enduring nature of divine love. Lesson text, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. Amen. Love lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted did me oh love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me amen love lifted me again our international subject is love never fails Love never fails. And it doesn't. Not divine love. It never fails. It will always come through. Even if one person in your life chooses to shut down the love for you, that divine love will flow to you through another person. But that divine love will always flow. And this picks up right where we left off in our last uh lesson where I extolled all of you to to not let how other people have treated you uh, stop you from sharing divine love and being a help and aid to those who are in need. Doesn't matter how you feel other people have treated you, you do the right thing and be a help to whoever you can be a help to as much as you can. Because as you send out divine love, divine love will come back to you. And many times it will not come back through the person that you helped, that you gave assistance to, but it's going to come through someone else. It will come through open doors that no one can open. It will come through uh, closed doors that no one can, no man can close. It will, no man can open back up. It will come through opportunities. It will come through financial blessings, uh, the likes that you couldn't have expected in amounts and uh, that. You've never given because you never had that much money. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. When you send out that divine love, when you do right by people, that rightness, that goodness, those blessings will come back to you seven times fold. Amen. And some say seven times seven. Uh, Jesus even said he will come, it will come back to you some uh, 30 fold, some 60 fold, some 100 fold. The apostle Paul said, uh, when you give from your heart, when you have a charitable heart, it will come back to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, when men give liberally into your bosom. UHSC subject again is the enduring nature of divine love. It endures. It persists. It is uh goes on in perpetuity. It means it never ends. It never dies. It goes on from one moment to the next, from one life to the next. I hear one of my old pastors, uh, Prince John B. Lewis Jr., he always would tell us, when you do good, the good will come back to you. And what you don't receive in this life, you will receive in the life to come. Amen. It's coming back. You will get back all the good that you send out one way or the other is coming back home. First Corinthians uh, 13 is a timeless expression of the characteristics of divine love. Uh, I'm going to read a few verses. Uh, let me read uh, verses one through three. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, I and have not charity, I have I am nothing. 
And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Uh, charity here is a translation of the Greek word agape. You look in, I'm reading from the King James, you look at some other modern, more modern uh, translations, they just translate into love. So we'll say, uh, uh, for example, uh, verse three, and though I bestow all goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not, it was instead of saying charity, it was saying have not love, it profited me nothing. So that word charity, in the way we would use it, better be would be better translated into the word love. In fact, the Bible, uh, uh, again, so charity here is a translation of the Greek word agape, and that is a concept of divine love. And in fact, the Bible discusses four types of love, but I don't won't go into that detail uh, in this video, but I want to present it this way. I'm going to give you four statements uh, to show how even when we say the word, is that same word love in English, it has different uh, connotations. And I remember, <laughs> take you to English class, a, a denotation is the dictionary definition. And a connotation is the way it, it is used in ordinary language. Here are the four statements. Number one. I love my car. Number two, I love my dog. Number three, I love my job. Number four, I love my children. We instinctively assign different meanings to these phrases. In other words, different connotations. Each quote unquote love has a similar but distinctive meaning. We instinctively know that each of these statements, whether by different people, let's say, will make it even more poignant if the same person made all four of these statements. I love my car. I love my dog. I love my job. I love my children. We would instinctively or assume that they don't mean the same thing with each love. Yes, they love their car. <laughs> they may get it washed regularly, keep it clean, keep it waxed. It may be their dream car. They always wanted whatever, you know, whatever, you know, make a model it is. So that's what they've always wanted. So they really love it. They value it. It represents uh, the manifestation of their dreams. It may work very hard to get it. So they love it. But we know that they don't love it in the same way they love their dog, that pet. So often, uh, many of us who have had pets, so those of you who currently have a pet, we view our pets in a very high regards. Uh, we view them, some view, you know, treat their pet as if they're their own child. They are part of the family. When the pet dies, we mourn for that pet as if they were a human being because we have so much love and regard for them. We care about them. We have the feelings we will attach to that pet. That dog may not necessarily attached to the car some people might sure so the dog dies you're going to have a different feeling if the, the car is in an accident because you figure more than likely in most cases you feel i can replace the car where you can't replace the dog you're starting to see the distinctions i love my job someone said they love their job again it's not the same way they love their car their dog or their children you love your job you may really like the company you work for, the environment you work in. Someone said they love their job. They may really more so mean they love their professional career. They love what they do. They, they enjoy what they do. They enjoy the people they work with, so forth. But it's not the same as then we go to the number four statement, the fourth statement, I love my children. Uh, you may love your job, but you probably not wouldn't you know, die for your job. You may have a job like a police officer or a firefighter that death you know, is, a, is a real possibility of the job, but you're not dying for the job itself. Whereas your children, you would give your life for your children more than likely. Those of us who have children, we would give our lives for our child in an instant. If it was a choice between us or the child, 
we would choose uh, ourselves to go down. And many people have been in situations where you no know, bullets were flying and they instinctively covered their children, not even giving a thought to what would happen. Or they figure I, I, this, this means I'm probably going to die. Well, they just, well, I just have to die because I have to do what I can to save my child. It's, it's instinctive. It's in you. That so each of these, not necessarily in a particular order, but I, I think it, it gets deeper and deeper into to the to what divine love is, where it's talks again, love never fails. Agape is again divine love. Divine love is the highest form of love, higher than even the love of the most devoted lover, higher than the love of a mother. It's very high, isn't it? Divine love is unconditional love. There are no strings attached. That's divine love. When you do for a person, no matter what they do to you, when you just do, and you're not looking for that person to do anything back towards you. That is divine love at its highest, at its finest. Some people give large sums of money, but not from the heart. Some even give time, but not from the heart. They have secret motives. Their strings attached. Oh, well, I give you a lot of money, but you're gonna have to do what I want you to do. I, I'll, I'll give you my time. I'll spend time with you, but you're gonna have to, to bow when I say bow. You're gonna have to, to, to run when I say run when I say jump. I expect you to say how high. This is why our societies are so unjust. This is why the system is so messed up. To live daily in divine love is a struggle to keep our material nature at bay. As we said uh, uh, last week, uh, the first law of nature is self-preservation. That is a materialistic view, but it's a real thing. We, who, who, who wants to just die for no particular reason? Who wants to die needlessly? Who wants to die before their time? We, we want to persist. We want to live. We want longevity. That is in our DNA. So, of course, we're going to do whatever it is we have to do. But we have to be very careful that we don't allow a selfish spirit to take hold of us, whereby we cannot operate in the spirit of divine love. We must operate in divine love at all times. That is God's way. That is God's only way. Divine love. That's what makes it so difficult because we want to do what's best for us or our household and so forth. But we have to do what's best for everybody, for the, for the community. That doesn't mean you never look out for yourself, but it means that you, you balance what I need to do for myself with what I need to do for my family. I want to do what I want to do, but I have to take care of my wife and children. It's a balancing act. It's a daily that's is a daily struggle because the flesh says I want to do what I want to do. I want to go where I want to go. I want to live how I want to live. I want to run the street. I, I want to do what I want to do. I I work with this money. This is my money. I do what I want to do with it. But I got to balance that with. I didn't have to say I do. I didn't, I didn't have to plant a seed and bring three children into the world. But since I did those things, that yes, I went and I earned this money and it's my money, but I can't just, I got to weigh that against, but I have a responsibility and obligation to my family. I have a responsibility and obligation to the church. I didn't have to get on my knees back in uh, uh, August 17th, twenty. Uh, 2002 and get ordained i didn't have to get ordained i didn't have to devote myself to the church i don't have to be a member of universal hager spiritual church or any church for that matter but since i have chosen to be a member since i have chosen to go into the ministry since i have chosen to accept various positions on the national state and local level since i have chosen to accept these positions and to reap the benefits of them such as they are, then I have a responsibility again. Yes, it's my money. I earned my money. It's my money. I can do what I want to do with it. But I have made a commitment and obligation. So I have to honor that and give to the ministry 
as much as I can also. That doesn't mean now that if I, I you know, have to do something for myself, you know, provide some self-care for myself, I really need to take care of some things personally. Yes, I need to do that. But it's always a counterbalance. But see, if I'm selfish, I don't care. I don't, I'm not going to worry about the, the balancing act. But the balancing act is the, the divine love. That's why it's a struggle every day. That divine love. We take walk about time. I want it. It's my time. It's my life. God gave me my life. Do what I want with it. But I also know that if it were not for the word and grace of God, where would I be? So again, it's the same thing. I choose to give my time to my family. I choose to give my time to the ministry. I choose to give my time to the church because I feel like those things have given value to me and I feel I should give value back to it. Divine love. The enduring nature of divine love. It endures. It persists. So God bless you. I'm praying you receive a good word from this lesson today. And again, that 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verses 1 to 13 is a beautiful chapter to study on the enduring nature of divine love. Amen. Uh, follow us on all our social media channels, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Father Hurley, all one word, F-A-T-H-E-R-H-U-R-L-E-Y. Follow us on all our channels. We're bringing new content. We're rebuilding. We're moving forward. Also, visit our website, fatherhurley.com, for more uh, information on the ministry and uh, blogs and so forth. So until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you. I love you. May peace and love abide with you always.